So with Toshi safely back in town, we can now continue our search for the other two missing kids. And with some helpful information from Paulo, we have a possible idea of where we might be heading next. With one small caveat regarding that information. He mentioned that it was in the southwestern portion of the castle, and without a compass, that's not super helpful. So for now, we're just going to use the process of elimination and explore some areas that we didn't previously. And much like we did before, we're going to stick to the perimeter first, so we're not going to go into this door just yet. Instead, we're going to go ahead and press forward down this hallway. Now, there was a reason that I didn't go down this hallway initially, and it's not just because of that fearsome bat. No, it's because in this very peculiar short hallway here, we are given another door to enter, it's just... Yeah, it is very much a dead end right now. Though, if we open up the windows here, not only do we get some additional light, but we also get a view of what appears to be an open courtyard. Hmm, I wonder how we could get over there. Well, since this is a dead end, I guess that just leaves that one door that we bypassed earlier. And though, for the most part, usually when a door has a symbol on it, that does mean that it's locked. In this case, though, this spiral symbol means something else. Yeah, that spiral symbol this time actually indicates a spiral staircase. And what do we find on this upper floor? But a very rare and brand new enemy. And while I do take pretty easy uh, care of this very ab-ripped red eagle, <laughs> uh, bear in mind that this thing is a lot more dangerous than it initially appears. Yeah, those are rocking abs. And if we check this corpse further, we do find that it is carrying a quarter. I, I think that that very much looks like a quarter. But yeah, you don't see those particular enemies too much. You most only see them on these exterior parapets, and even then, they are very, very rare. Here we find a, I guess it's something of a skylight, though considering the eternal darkness we find here, that seems a bit pointless. So there we finally see the primary attack of these red eagles. It is a fairly quick swooping attack. And, believe it or not, it does quite a bit of damage and will manage to hit you twice in one swoop. The good thing is they honestly have very little health. You can take them down with about three shots and they are a reasonably large target. Though, more importantly, we have hit another dead end, which might seem initially like bad news. I mean, we don't really have anywhere else to go currently, but you might also recall, outside of that useful information that Paulo gave us, he did give us something else. He gave us those magical teleportation markers that he used to get us out of the Dungeon of Time. And we are going to use them here to solve our first puzzle. Now to use the marker, you just have to place it down. And in this case, we're going to place it all the way down in this hole in the center here. Once that's dropped down, we just have to use the remaining one in our inventory to hopefully be teleported to a brand new location. And in 
fact, it is that courtyard that we saw previously through those two windows. So yeah, this was an area we could have easily reached in the previous video, but to make further progress, we would have needed those teleportation items from Paolo. Now, at this point, you might be saying, well, kind of getting tired of the Spirit Castle, and we were kind of promised, you know, a brand new area with all types of new intrigue and surprises, and bear in mind, we will be getting to that shortly. We are getting reasonably close to finishing up, you know, the Spirit Castle. And the good news is we don't have to head up this spiral staircase. It's, it's a bit strange to me, but it just ends up heading right up to that broken door. I don't think there's any way to ever get through it, or really any reason to ever head back up to that particular area again. As we head up this staircase here, we are at yet another crossroads, though our choice is made a little bit simpler by this locked door. Though through this door here is finally our brand new area. Now, it may seem initially like it has the exact same palette as the Spirit Castle for the most part, but bear in mind, this is definitely a brand new area. You can kind of tell by the slightly different music track. For the most part though, this area is going to be a lot more straightforward. It's gonna have a lot less big wide open rooms and backtracking. Though we will have to do a little bit of backtracking at least to open that particular door. No, what we'll find mostly in this area are some pretty dangerous combat encounters. Now, while well, we have definitely seen this ghoul before, and it seems a lot less imposing than the night gaunts that we fought previously, uh, I guarantee that we will be shortly coming across some very, very dangerous enemies. Though, I mostly just wanted to clear out this room you know, to fill out the map. Also, this area seems to have a liking to pretty much funnel you one way with one-way locked doors, so... Yeah, we are pretty much stuck with checking out this room. And that's to get our first introduction to the much more acrobatic ghoul. Now, while it seems initially they take only two shots to take down, yeah, after they are no longer hopping and flipping about, as you bring them down to ground level, they will start to salt you from a crab-like stance. Now, while that initial encounter was just to you know, pretty much introduce them, they were introduced in a fairly innocuous way. Almost something akin to a joke. I mean, they were just kind of putting on a show for us. Bear in mind, though, that as this was an introduction, I think it was just to get you used to the attack pattern. The game is really gonna amp up the difficulty, as we'll be seeing shortly. Now, speaking of amping up the difficulty, I do want to kind of mention the fact that we did previously fight Minotaurs. And that kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, for the most part, the enemies have been kind of... I don't want to say random boilerplate, you know, horror stereotypes. But to get something out of Greek mythology all of a sudden? Was, I don't know, kind of out of left field. I mean, as far as I know, Necromedia isn't a part of Greek mythology, and from what I know of the Japanese game, she is actually defined as a Shinigami, which is kind of a Japanese Grim Reaper. 
or a death god, I'd say. Speaking of death gods, still, still just have a horrible time killing these rats. And they had no troubles killing most of Europe in the 15th to 16th century. And while it seems initially there isn't anything of interest in this storage room, yeah, you might have noticed there out of the corner of your eye, there is something hidden behind the boxes here. And it's actually a somewhat familiar item. It's another rope and hook. So that means that we are going to have to either be climbing up or down somewhere. It's just more or less a question right now of where that is going to be. But yeah, personally, I found the progression of, you know, rats, bats, wolves, zombies to minotaurs to be a bit out of nowhere, but I feel like, you know, there's probably going to be more justification for that as we progress through the game. have another brand new enemy. Another one I make look a bit easier than it actually is. Another poor member of the animal kingdom driven to savagery by, I guess, Necromedia's evil powers. And the snake initially seems like a pretty weak enemy all around. I mean, it Obviously, it didn't have a lot of health. It probably has a small hitbox. Doesn't seem like that much of an issue. Until you are put into a room with about four of them. So we're not going to worry about that for right now. Yeah, this, this area seems a bit strange with its enemies so far. I mean, acrobatic ghouls and suddenly snakes. And not to mention the fact that well, for a castle, this area seems to be a bit locked off and kind of separated from everything. I don't know, it almost seems like they're trying to hide something up in this area. But yeah, the one other thing to keep in mind with the snakes is, as you can probably imagine, while they don't do a lot of damage with their attacks, they do have the possibility to poison you. It's just, they are pretty easy to dodge given enough space, and they do have a pretty large wind-up whenever they attack. So, yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, really not that much of a difficulty. Much like you're probably thinking with these eagles, since I am pretty, pretty much gaming them super hard. But believe me when I say that if you are not constantly moving, there is a good chance that they will do an amazing amount of damage to you. But it looks like we're pretty much finished exploring almost all this area. I mean, outside of that room full of snakes, there's just this door here. Which does lead up to a brand new floor with one small problem. Yeah, yet another dead end. As I mentioned previously, this area really, really enjoys doing these one-way locked doors. And while it seems that we have reached pretty much a very large dead end, this is probably one of the times when I, I'd call bullshit on the game because there's no real clear obvious thing that you have to do here. But this is where we are going to end up using our rope. Now it's not going to be to go off the side of the wall here. Instead, if we look up, see that a little section of the wall up here is a little bit shorter than the other portions. And I guess that is just low enough that Akira is able to lob the, the hook up to the top there, allowing us progression to that upper floor. 
Yeah, as far as I can tell, though, if you use the check command to see if there's any indication that you can use the rope here or anything else, I do not believe there is. So you can probably really, really easily overlook the fact that you can even get up here. But now that we are finally up to this upper floor... We are introduced to one of the better, I guess, music scores in the game. And what I feel to be one of the more garish and more fitting, I guess, environmental palettes that the game uses. I mean, it feels very, I don't know, I guess garish and somewhat evil. For some reason or another, this area is very, very heavily guarded. And we are already greeted by two lovely guard dogs that we had to put down. And we do want to make sure to start lighting up the lanterns here because that will stop these guys from respawning. It's just that yeah, you might not realize it at this point. But we have gone through quite a bit of fighting. If we take a look at our current ammo pool, yeah, we've already gone through about half of our ammo stock, which is not good, because yeah, we still have quite a bit of fighting to do in this area. We're just going to have to make sure and try to be as accurate as we possibly can. Also needing to stay on our toes as much as we can because, yep, it was a pretty dickish enemy placement. And we also saw one of the very unique attacks that these aerobatic, acrobatic ghouls have, which is to do a spinning windmill kick, which covers quite a bit of area and quite a bit of distance. And as far as I know, they still will do the normal poison with their stabbing arm given the chance, so... Yeah, it's best not to give them that chance. Thankfully, this ghoul is given a little bit less of an opportunity to try to take us by surprise. And while at first it may seem that this is kind of a pointless dead-end room, it's best that you make sure and look as thoroughly in here as possible because the far end here is pretty easy to miss new metal. Speaking of which, I think that brings our metal count right now up to three. Though I haven't looked at them just yet, we have a Fate, Death, and Sleep metal. Not really sure of what the theme is supposed to be with those. We have no idea currently where they are supposed to be used. The only, the only real connection I have, at least mentally, with those you know words is, I guess, inevitability. I mean, inevitably you're going to die. Inevitably you're probably going to, have to sleep, and you can't really escape the inevitable hand of fate. Good thing is, all those things are in the distant future for us. Because I think we're still making pretty good headway taking down these very acrobatic ghouls. I, I am a bit annoyed though. I had a pretty bad RNG with the, uh, the items that these monsters drop. Because the items they drop are not only worth a lot of money, but they are very oddly macabre. The, the sellable item that they drop are gold teeth. And you sometimes can find quite a bit on them to where you'll almost be having a complete pocket full of golden dentures. So I, 
I have this really bad picture in my mind of just the uh, the local town store with a jar full of you know, gold teeth. Ooh. But here we finally get a good sensation, a good view of what it really, really is to, to fight these horrible, horrible red eagles. For the most part, you'll probably have to lure them into swooping at you to try to sidestep them. And even then, you'll probably end up taking way, way more damage than you might think. Are you okay? You're not looking so good. Good thing is that so far, they've mostly been pretty generous with their item drops, so... I mean, it's probably worthwhile that we did come out here, even though... Yeah, we are still running even more low on bullets. Yeah, in the end though, we had a bit of bad luck, and that, that was just a waste of time. So behind the other available door here, you stumble into a seemingly empty dead end except for this very eye-catching large black mirror. Now if we check it, there definitely is something to it because, well, it wouldn't say it was too dark to see anything, so well, maybe let's Cast a little bit of light and see what we can see in it. It's just a very onyx, reflectionless mirror. Though I feel like I'm not alone anymore in this room. It's a bit odd. Only made even more odd by what appears to be a gun-toting evil reflection of ourselves. Now, this is more or less a puzzle. We can't shoot this thing directly, though, given the chance this thing will do a ton of damage if it manages to shoot us. No, what we want to do is... shatter its source of life. Yeah, by doing that, the reflection is quite easily taken care of, though it might be easily overlooked the fact that you can even, you know, maybe interact with the mirror at all. Because before that guy spawns, if you try to shoot the mirror, nothing at all happens. And even though we did probably manage to give ourselves seven years bad luck, Amongst the shards here, we will find something of use. Yeah, amongst these shattered pieces, we do find one particular piece that we take a fancy to, so just go ahead and pocket that. And, believe it or not, we are pretty much done with this floor, which is a bit of a bummer, considering I, I do like the aesthetics. It's just that, as you can probably assume from the map there, the next uh, available couple of doors and rooms are pretty much going to loop around. For some reason though, and what I can only assume to be for padding reasons, also to just enjoy all the work they put into this environment, it's not going to be a just straight shot over to the, the other door that we could get to. Instead, yeah, we are given just a short series of hallways and rooms that don't really have to 
don't really seem to have any purpose. Though we do finally get a somewhat dangerous enemy encounter. You probably think you have more area in this room to, to kind of maneuver around in, but you really don't. Especially considering how far their shiv arm reaches are their, you know, spinning wheel kicks will go. And even in their little crab stance there, they will cover quite a bit of ground and corner you pretty quickly. Are you okay? You're not looking so good. All in all though, compared to I think my original test run of this, I'm doing a lot better, which is still not really saying that we are doing good, you know, equipment wise, especially, yeah, we are running incredibly low on bullets right now. And I hate to say it, but we really only have one other place we can go right now in this southern tower. And that is that very, very horrendous room full of snakes. And believe it or not, the thing we have to do in that room will involve us killing all four of those snakes. So, yeah, we might have to make a little return trip to town which, you know, kind of a, a inevitability, which we've already kind of covered previously. The good thing is that there is something we can do to make that journey a little bit easier. First things first, though, we need to make our way all the way back to that door leading into the room with all the snakes. And you might recall, well, we did use the item previously to, to solve a puzzle, but the markers that Paulo gave us can also be used at our own leisure to quickly jump from one area to another. All we have to do is drop it at one location, and whenever we move to a separate location, well, whenever we use it again, it will teleport us back to the initial one that we dropped. So, in this case, I want to go ahead and drop one of the markers right here in front of the door. Just gonna find it first. And with that safely dropped here, I think we, it's time we quickly make our way back to town. Also, just for the sake of showing how much of a journey it is, I decided to show it in five times speed. And I guess it also shows the fact that, you know, if you know your way around, the game is pretty nice enough to not put any really, really dire enemies that could block your path. So it's mostly just, you know, walking back and forth, though, you know, in the end, it's still about a five minute walk. But, after restoring all of our stocks, now it's a question of how quickly can we get back to where we previously were. Yeah, instead of making another five minute walk back, in the blink of an eye, we are right back to where we need to be though. Still have no idea why there are so many snakes in this area. I mean, secluded castles really don't seem like a proper ecosystem for snakes, right? But for now, just kind of to steal ourselves and try to do our best in this very, very cramped situation. I'd recommend the first thing you do is at least try to clear a path because yeah, you definitely can't just walk over the snakes, and their hitboxes are fairly huge and difficult to get around. The other thing is, is trying to figure out just the right height to shoot them at, but with a little good luck, you can pretty easily clear them out. Ah! 
though we've run to another problem. Which has very quickly killed us by petrifying us. Yeah, the, the Greek mythology doesn't stop with the Minotaur. Out of nowhere, we are suddenly assaulted by Stenos, a Gorgon. And, much like Perseus, we are going to have to figure out some, some means of reflecting backwards the petrifying gaze of the Gorgon. And, well, that's exactly why we decided to break that mirror up on the upper floor. Now, you only have a very small window of opportunity to do this. It is pretty satisfying when you get it all out of the way. Yeah, it's kind of nice how the game re remembered the fact that it can probably do some pretty interesting puzzles. And what exactly was Stenos guarding? Why, it appears to be her boudoir. Now we don't need to take a nap. What we really came in came in here for is this lovely key. And a part of me wants to say that this S key is probably, you know, for, for Stanos's name, but I don't think she would be that tacky. Still, with that key safely in hand, that means that well, we are now done with the Southern Tower, and that also means f finally we can, I, I guess, head to the destination where the kid should be held. Yeah, believe it or not, this has been pretty much all a big massive sidetrack to just get to the area that Paula was even talking about in the first place. Yeah. As you might remember, he mentioned it was more of a dungeon and less of a you know, snake-filled tower with a gorgon in it. Though, I don't even know if he would have filled us in on that, were he even aware that, you know, that existed. And while the continuing increase in Greek mythology might leave you scratching your head in regards to how it really uh, keys into anything going on right now. Well, we're gonna probably leave that thought on the back burner because... Yeah, we are almost into that brand new area. And we are pretty close to calling it a video. Just if you are curious about what lies beneath the very, very, very deep depths of the Spirit's Castle, well, to find that out, you're going to have to tune in next time as we go through this very unique looking door and see what lies in store for us on the other side. See you then.